Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and we are back to our live streaming. We've been gone in Africa for a long time, and we are back. And as you'll probably notice through the course of this, I got a bug. Hey and uh, I just heard myself talking. But uh, <laughs> I've got a pretty good cold going, or flu, or some foreign disease I've got going on. I don't know what it is, but we're going to get through this. I'm a little bit clogged. I took some cold medicine before this. Here's so, hoping. Yeah, here's, here's hoping. hoping so it might dry me up a little bit. But uh, yeah, those airplanes, man, they're nothing but big flying cans of farts and germs. Oh, yeah. You know, ugh. Lots of farting, lots of germs. And they just get off and you just breathe that air. And that flight back from, uh, we flew from Nairobi to uh, uh, Dubai, and then from Dubai to Orlando. That Dubai flight to Orlando is almost 16 hours. Hey. Holy moly. But anyway, we are back. And our Africa trip was absolutely incredible. Nick has never been to Africa. And I've been telling him for years, man, it's going to change your life. It's going to change your life. Uh, he was speechless as well. And uh, we had such an amazing time. We went with our expedition art friends, Manny Carrascal and Christy Tipton, John Tipton, uh, Peter Hahn, uh, Rebecca Knight. Uh, we went there with... Um, Greg Beecham and his wife, uh, 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 Lou, jeez, I couldn't remember, <laughs> Lou Beecham, and then uh, Darren Bader, uh, we had a, an incredible group, uh, we just had an amazing time, and photographing, sketching, uh, hanging out on the bar, hunting, we hunted with lions at night, amazing, I want to show you some of these images, look at some of these. Uh, real quick, can you tilt your... Uh, uh well, it came down just a tad. Down, just, now just I'm a, a little low. Yeah. Oh, there, there you go. Right there. So, oh, and by the way, I've got, uh, I'm back with Dustin. He's here today. And uh, once again, we've got Nick, and he's in Sarasota. And he's going to be answering questions. And uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, I got so inspired while I was out there. I wanted, I wanted to come home and just do a big oil painting. I haven't touched any oils in a while, and so I wanted to get get on a big oil painting. I just ordered uh, like five 30 by 40 inch canvases. I'm going to go big, and I'm going to do some uh, some big images. I'm going to turn those into oil painting lessons. So uh, today, what I want to do is take one of those images uh, that I picked out and just do a little digital comp, and you know, do do a painting of it. And because uh, there's certain things that I like to do in my paintings ahead of time, and I like to do that digitally first, and then I can uh, translate that to the canvas. So I'm going to do that today. And uh, but anyway, before we do that, I just wanted to scroll through some of these and uh, show you some of this imagery. I'm going to blow these up a little bit bigger for uh, for those of you that are on your phones. But I mean, right from the start, we're out there just seeing these beautiful zebras you know it's what's nice about this is uh this isn't the zoo this isn't discovery channel this is the real thing and uh but it's like you're watching the discovery channel in person that's what's incredible about it i just i love it uh nick is eating chicken noodle soup yeah nick is sick as well we both got the crud oh both of you guys oh are? yeah he's he's just as sick as me Oof. And, so it uh, must have been something on the plane. Yeah, we both got something. And uh, it, it, we were fine the whole trip. And it wasn't until we started coming home that day. So something was kind of incubating in us that whole time we were there. It was and, that darn <clears throat> baby in the seat behind you. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's probably what it was. But, uh, yeah, the, you know, right off the bat we had these zebras kind of sparring with each other and fighting. And really fun stuff. Uh, baboons. Look at these guys. Oh, wow. beautiful. But uh, a really amazing, amazing stuff. Well, what were the shots you took with the uh, the big lens, the big boy? These are some of those. So right oh, here. Really? So, yeah. So, actually, these are some of the lenses here. Watch this. You want to see, some, you want to see uh, nature at its uh, most brutal? Look at this. Hold on. Let me, let me blow up this one. Oh, that's a hyena with an impala head. Nice. They had uh, they had killed the impala and they're scavenging it. Or I don't know if they had killed it or if lions had killed it. But anyway, this guy we came up and uh, the hyena uh, 
they were kind of scavenging off of what was left over. I actually think they made the kill because there was still quite a bit left there. And uh, that's a marabou stork uh, flying up right there. But yeah, that's a pretty brutal image right there. And it's that's nature, man. YouTube question. Hope you had a great trip. How can a novice such as myself improve their shading? Well, you got to look at uh, you got to look at nature. Improve your shading. You know, shading is nothing more than looking at light and shadow. How does light fall in form? And when you're looking at nature, if when you're look, drawing from life, that's how you improve it. And so that's what you need to do. You need to look at nature and uh, uh, and you'll you'll start to see and understand how light falls on form and that's why I take so many photos that's why I go out and I draw from life as much as I can all of that is going to teach you how to uh, draw and paint better shadows so look at this guy look at this shot right here right here ooh this is so brutal look at him right there he's got mm -hmm. that head yeah those are hyenas that's freaking metal, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Lapid face vulture. That's the biggest vulture in Africa right there. Giant. Huge, huge birds. Marabou storks. I really love the this sequence in here. These these uh, warthogs kind of sparring and fighting right here. I love this shot. I might do a little draw. I might just a little pucker there. Put his tail down, cover up his pucker. <laughs> But there's some funny, uh, the, uh, the warthogs are everywhere. We saw, uh, let me, I'm going to jump ahead here, because I don't want to go through too much of these. Oh, the other thing we're going to do, we're going to be pulling a lot of these and creating African wildlife reference packs that you can purchase on our website. We go, you know, we're doing the safaris, and we're bringing back the reference, and I'm going to be able to share it with you guys. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Look at this guy. He was amazing. This was with the close-up, uh, with the big lens. Look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> every fly, every hair, you can see everything in there. Oh, I'm so juicy right now. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Apologize. I don't want to blow my nose. It's even grosser. But, uh, so anyway, uh, this guy was awesome. And he got up and kind of walked. We Oh, we, the other thing, too, that I'm not showing today is the incredible amount of video that Nick was able to get. Uh, really beautiful video. All steady cam and uh, just absolutely stunning. Oh, um, that's a nice pose. Yeah, and you can tell right here, though, all the lions that we came across were very well fed. There's lots of prey out on the Mara, and uh, they weren't they weren't suffering at all. None of them were hungry. They were all fat. Everyone was happy. All fat. Yeah, yeah, very much so. <laughs> really good lighting. Uh, just really great stuff. You know, little bits of reference like pause. You know, we'll be getting a lot of this stuff for you guys. A lot of different poses. King, king. So we got lots of great stuff for lions and young lions as well. You can see a lot of that. We came up on this one pride, and everyone was uh, sleeping and doing well. Oh, and everything that you're seeing right here that I'm showing you. Uh, you know, all these lions and, and uh, the, the all this stuff right here. This is all within the first hour, hour and a half of getting out on the Mara on the first day. This is the first, like the first 45 minutes was like right here. Really? Yeah. All of that was? All of that. It was the first 45 minutes. Like with the zebra, the hyena, yep, the lion, all, the, all yep. the first 45. Yep. It's still, it's crazy. It's like... YouTube like, question. Do you still practice daily and learn anatomy and learn something new? Absolutely. I was going out there. One of the things that I did on this trip that I hadn't done on my previous trips to Africa, on my previous trips, I focused mainly on photographing, gathering the reference, bringing it back home. I actually didn't draw much. I drew a little bit back in my tent using reference after the fact, but I wasn't drawing from life. What we did on this trip was um, we took several days... Uh, we took our drawing material with us all the time. We didn't want to. We might make sure we bring our camera so we could get all the reference we needed. But we did a lot of drawing right there on the spot, drawing uh, these animals from life, and really analyzing and looking. And, and even though you know the anatomy, there's certain things that happen on the surface that I don't really think about. Um, and so there was things that I learned, and it was really great. It was an amazing experience. And uh, so you know, look how beautiful these cats are. They're healthy. They're they're uh, they're well fed. They're in good shape. Um, you know, this guy was super cute. There's his dad's feet sitting in front of him. 
little little bit of Simba right there. Simba and Mufasa. <laughs> so lots of cool stuff. This this uh mother was really stout, strong. <coughs> what are you gonna draw? I am going to draw a lion on this one. Uh, these are Topi. Got some great ostrich. We got everything. Look, we got we got all kinds of great stuff. Uh, I love these mongoose. These, uh, a lot of people think they're meerkats when they're out on the Mara, but these aren't meerkats. These are mongoose, and uh, they they gather together in groups. And uh, these are termite mounds, old termite mounds that they're hanging out on. And uh, they're really those are called nine banded mongoose. Interesting. Really fun to draw. A lot of character to them. You can see there. And same with the uh, the the uh, Cape Buffalo. The Cape Buffalo are just big, mean sons of guns, and they're just awesome. Came up a lot on uh, Nile crocodiles. Big, monstrous Nile crocodiles. Also, oh, I'm, before I, I'm, I'm kind of diving into this, I want to mention to you guys that uh, a couple of things. Um, I kind of got ahead of myself because I was so excited to talk to you about it. But I want to go back real quick. First of all, I want to tell you that we have a 25% off sale uh, going on, 25% off of everything on the site uh, at CreatureArtTeacher.com. So go check that out. 25% uh, off of everything going on right now at CreatureArtTeacher.com. The other thing that I want to tell you about that I'm super excited about is, um, you know, we had our character design event, that live web event that we did a few weeks ago. It was really successful and we really had a great time doing it. So we want to do it again. This time we're going to do a, a class on believable creature design. Uh, you guys know that I love to create creatures. I love to take the reality of the animals that we know on planet Earth and take the things that I know and recombine them and create new animals that you might find somewhere else. And so um, I'm using comparative anatomy, using uh, uh, the way that I break up the animals into sections, that sort of thing, which I'm going to go over in the first part of the day. You can recombine those things and create creatures that can fulfill like alien environments. And we're going to create a, a, a render of completely another creature by the end of the day. And so that's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be December 7th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's going to be a six-hour class. I'm going to take you guys through it. It's going to be live. You'll be able to ask questions. Uh, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's my time. So wherever you are in the world, kind of make the adjustments according to that. Uh, go over to CreatureArtTeacher.com slash live. And that is going to give you uh, the all the information that you need. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, Oh, uh, right now I just want to tell you too that the 25% off sale, uh, that sale includes membership. So if you want to become a member, you can become a member for 25% off. That's huge. That's a huge savings. That's almost 50 bucks off. So that's huge. Uh, but anyway, uh, that class, December 7th, it's going to be great. And uh, we're really looking forward to it. And once again, it's a limited number of spaces. So don't let it get sold out uh, and miss out. We had several people that missed out on the last one because we sold out. And I don't want that to happen to you. And then also, always remember, we've got our Patreon page where we're raising money to help ourselves you know, uh, continue making our courses. And, uh, and there's different tiers in there. There's the dollar tier per month that will give you images each. Uh, can you hear my nose squeaking as I'm talking? A little bit. Okay, because it's kind of gross. I can hear my <laughs> nose squeaking. But anyway, uh, there's the dollar tier where you can get several images a month and you can download, use them as screensavers, whatever you want. There is the $5 tier, which will give you those same images, but you'll get the entire uh, uh, Photoshop file with all the layers and everything so you can see how those are created. And then at the $10 tier, you're going to get live streams. You're going to get uh, uh, one live stream a month. You're going to also get uh, animation files, all kinds of cool stuff. So uh, that's Patreon, and we really appreciate your support over there. Anyway, so I think I've covered everything. I think so. I'm going to be really gross. <laughs> oh, okay. Here we go. Uh, what len lenses did you use, and can you recommend one or two lenses? Well, I use uh, my camera body that I use when I'm over there is a Canon uh, 7D uh, EOS, 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 EOS 7D. 7D. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think it's the uh, the first the the Mark One, the the first gen. It is. It's an older camera. And then uh, the lens is a uh, 70, 70, to 70 to 300. Then I also had a 150 to 600, which they, I found to be too big. <laughs> when I'm, I used it one day, but sitting in the, uh, uh, in the uh, Land Rover, uh, it was giant. And with all the jumping around, bouncing around, the thing weighs about 30 pounds. It was just too much to handle. And that was a lot, a lot of these photos were taken with that 600, but I was pulling way back. I didn't have to zoom way in. But I really love the dappled light on some of these images, if you look here. Just beautiful, beautiful light. And uh, I did a quick watercolor of one of these, and I gave it to my, my friend Manny uh, while we were on the trip. But once again, beautiful, beautiful light. And uh, we'll be doing a lot of images from, uh, a lot of paintings from these images. Uh, there's one that I'm going to be doing a big painting of. I just love this composition, and uh, I love the sky and the, just the simplicity of it. This big impala yeah. hanging out there, and this silhouette, clear silhouette, the grasses, all of that. Um, we came across a serval. I've never seen a serval in the wild before, and uh, that was really cool. A serval? A serval, yeah. Which is a, it's another spotted cat, but they're small, yeah. and uh, about the size of a bobcat. Maybe a little smaller than a bobcat, just a touch. Uh, but we, uh, we've, I've seen them in captivity many times, but I've never seen them in the wild, and so here we are. So he's asking if you got shots of a, of any rhino. No, unfortunately, this is the first time I'd ever gone to the Mara where I didn't see a rhino. They're getting more and more scarce, and uh, which is sad. It's really sad, and uh, I was not able to see a black rhino on this trip. So, uh, so uh, here's uh, one of the bustards. These bustards are really big birds. They're about the size of a heron, but very, uh, very cool in their build. Kind of a neat bird, right there. It looks like it should be wearing a wearing a suit. Yeah, lots of cheetahs. Uh, more wildebeest. I've got a lot of stuff to go through that we'll be showing you. I got lots of photos for my uh, for my bathroom. You know, there's a cheetah pooping. I've got I've got cheetahs pooping. I've got warthogs pooping. I've got elephants pooping, and they all go up in the bathroom. So there you go. This is a shot right here. You can see the dust behind the the cheetah. She tried to get an impala and she missed, and so that was her slowing down. I was kind of late on the draw, but uh, yeah. So then she she came back, and she was pretty thirsty. And uh, she stopped to get a drink. This is we got some shots of her drinking, and uh, just a really beautiful cat. There she is there. So um, I've got thousands, literally thousands of these photos. So I can't go through everything, but I do want to show you. You know, I just wanted to show you a few, which I just thought were really great highlights. And uh, here she is chasing. Um, where is it? She was chasing a rabbit. As she was walking back, uh, a rabbit jumped up and took off, and she went after it. And uh, the photos aren't exactly in focus. I wasn't, I wasn't in great focus, but got some great poses, which I thought were cool. Here's a good one here. Here she is running. And she didn't catch it. She didn't, That rabbit got away, and she was running full speed. But that sucker, he... Was zigging and zagging and everything else. There she is. I got a pose of her running, but not the uh, not the rabbit in the shot. But uh, it was pretty cool. That's her there. There goes the rabbit. Silly rabbit. So that's rabbit. it. So she missed the rabbit, then she came back, and she plopped back down. Secretary birds. I love secretary birds. That's a secretary bird here. They just kind of walk around the savannah. Another very tall bird, big. Uh, did you see the baby spotted zebra? I did not see it. Uh, but it is from the Mara. And uh, I did not see it. We talked about it. Our drivers were Maasai, and they were telling us about how they had seen it, but, uh, but we didn't get to see it. I thought this right here would make a cool painting. Just that composition. Don't you think? It'd be yeah. kind of cool. Because you know the feet are off to the right. I just thought it was kind of cool. I thought it would make a really neat one. But these hyenas hanging out in the water I thought was really great. Uh, this guy drinking. Where is he? 
There they are. They're all hanging out. I got a lot of hyena shots this time, whereas uh, I never got that many last time. I, the last couple of times I was there. A really great video uh, Nick got of the zebra or the uh, giraffes. Right here, I got some really cool shots of them together. So lots of giraffes. I mean, my sinuses are like clogged. Clogged. This is going to be a painting right here. This one. Uh, where is it? This one right here. I don't even have to do anything to it. I don't have to change the composition. I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to paint it verbatim. I might change great. her ear and cock, cock her ear up a little bit higher. But other than that, I want to I want to give her... Her ear was a little bit damaged, and so it was flopped off to one side. But I want to fix that. But I think this is a beautiful painting right here. That's going to... That's turning into a painting. <laughs> Nick says he asked the sec secretary bird to hold his calls, and he <laughs> and he and he did didn't send him a single call. So uh, so here we go. So you know this is where the 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 lionesses are very affectionate with another with one another. A lot of times they're sisters, and you can see how this one's ear was kind of messed up. This is the one I had, I had profiled, and, uh, and they were just hanging out and cleaning each other rubbing on each other, really cementing the bonds. <coughs> Some really great stuff in through here. So, uh, saddle-billed stork. Really cool bird. Amazingly beautiful bird. And uh, the Maasai Village. We went in. I, we got some beautiful jewelry in there. And uh, uh, Dustin got a Maasai knife. I've got my spear. Spear. My spear. Go to the full screen. Yep. Got my Maasai spear. I got it from the village, which is very cool. Yeah, I should have brought my should have brought the knife over. Yeah. So and it's got a little bit of lion hair on it, right there. That's very cool. And uh, Maasai. I got a Maasai shuka right here. The shuka is the what they wear to keep warm in the morning and throughout the day if it's cold. They just kind of wrap it around themselves and tie it in different ways. It's called a Maasai Shuka. C-H-U-K-A. Shuka. A uh, YouTube comment. I missed out on your last live event, but I got this one. Yeah, that makes me happy. What the heck? There we go. What was that? So, uh, we watched the guys dance and they, they started jumping and uh, I'm going to show you some of these verticals. Look at the vertical on this guy. That's a heck of a jump. Do you think he jumped that high, Dustin? No. <laughs> I think you and I have, have similar physiques. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, well, I ended up dancing with them one night, and they got me to jump, and I jumped to, uh, like my six inches, and, uh, <laughs> and I kept jumping and kept jumping, and then I thought I was going to have a heart attack. It was horrible. But this is... Um, this guy here, he was jumping the highest out of everybody. And this is Moses. He was one of our drivers. We always talked about Moses being like the, the equivalent of like the, the, the high school quarterback that just went out was most successful, most popular guy. Because yeah. everybody knew Moses. Everybody loves Moses. And, uh, Moses catch, sees the most lines. He sees the most stuff in the RV or the, the Land Rover when we're driving. And he's the highest jumper. And he's just like the coolest dude. So, yeah, he's, he's pretty awesome. Well, uh, and we're also friends with them on Facebook now. He's Maasai, and they all have Facebook. Wow. Pretty cool. By the way, how did you get the spear and the knife through customs? Some people are asking. Oh, uh, we packed them on our checked luggage. And, and so it wasn't a big deal. You can bring back uh, items as long as it's not over a certain amount of money. And so we just I just checked everything. And so there's no problem. This was a wildebeest kill uh, that was done the morning that we had gone out. This is... A, Toward, this is late morning on the second day and we came across this wildebeest kill and uh, you can see look how fat there she is standing up you can see she was just munching away eating all morning and she's just a big balloon <laughs> she's just a big fat girl it's she ate a lot, of, a lot of wildebeest I just gotta have a wildebeest and uh, you can see how round she is she filled her belly she's ready for a coma yep so these are the five, these are the five Cheetah Brothers, right here. There's my bat. There's my other bathroom picture. <laughs> right there. 
But I uh, got some great shots of the five Cheetah Brothers. And uh, we're definitely going to... I'm going to do some paintings of them. Uh, I love this shot right here. But they, uh, they hang out together and do their hunting and, and uh, got some great stuff. This one here, that's going to turn into a painting as well. Oh, yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. That's a cool one. The Maasai Do any of the cats jump in the into the Range Rover? They do that sometimes. No, they do. Uh, uh, Moses, who we were driving with, had one come up. Or was it Benson? Either I, one of them had a, a cheetah come up and, and get right inside the thing and walk around. Wow. Uh, Furious Force Gaming on YouTube says, new subscriber here. Oh, excellent. How you doing? There's another one. I love that. Really cool shot. So anyway, um, I don't want to bore you too much with these because I want to get to uh, painting. Look. Go back to photos. There we go. Oh, this is our host. This is Jorge, our Spanish host, who owned he owned the uh, the camp where we stayed. The toughest man I've ever met. Beautiful sunsets. But here we go. We're coming up on this guy. So this is what I'm going to do the painting of. Right here. I'm going to do a painting of this. And uh, I've already got it set up up here. I'm going to change the lighting a little bit. I, you know how I like to do shadows across characters. And I think this is a prime candidate to do that with. And I want to solve that issue. Uh, I want to solve that issue in the painting itself. Or in the comp, rather than doing it on the painting. And so uh, I thought that might be kind of fun to do here today with you guys. And so let's jump over to Photoshop and start doing that. And uh, I'm not going to be able to talk a whole lot today. I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. But man, I'm so stuffed up. And so I've got like about 100 degree, 101 fever. But I wanted to do this today. I was really excited to show you guys all this stuff. So, isn't that nice? I took some cold medicine. Nothing. Didn't do a dang thing. Not, not one bit. No. Please. Okay, I'm gonna step out just for a second. All right. I'm gonna blow my nose. Dustin, entertain him. Okay. Uh, hi. How's it going? So. So while he was gone, I rescanned all the all of his sketchbooks, so that was fun. And uh, also, uh, oh, uh, you did not? Did you mention about the uh, the Friday? Never mind. I wait till you get back. No, but um, been working on a few advertisements, but mainly the sketchbooks. So uh, yeah, because I cropped them in a little too much the first time around. Because the scanner that I had did not quite fit the, the books. So I had to uh, borrow Dad's old scanner and rescan them all. And I think that was 12, 13 bucks. But, um, but yeah, so got all that done within a couple, couple of days. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, does anyone have questions for me while waiting? Or, oh, nope, never mind, he's back. Welcome back. Oh, much better. My ears are, my ears are a little better. A, a little better. I can hear a little better. My nose is a, I can breathe. Nice. All right. Sorry about that. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, did you mention the about our light live stream schedule changing? Oh no, I did not. That was huge. I forgot about that. Um, we are changing our live stream schedule. So I know you guys have really looked forward to the twice a week, but the twice a week for us is really, uh, it's been getting into our production schedule a little too much and we're not able to get the things done that I want to get done, namely courses for the website, uh, videos for YouTube, all that kind of stuff. By doing our live streams every Tuesday and Thursday, it really breaks up our week in a way that it makes it hard to get any kind of momentum going. So we are going to be going down to one live stream every Friday so that we can work consistently from Monday through Thursday 
and everything will be nice and we'll get some momentum going and then we can spend Friday with you guys and so unfortunately it's uh, something we have to do but it means we're going to be able to get more content out to you guys not just live streams but you know more uh, 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 spe specific courses classes that sort of thing and so we're going to be doing that starting next Friday not tomorrow there'll be no live stream tomorrow but on, on next Friday which is what's the date of next Friday whatever the date is do you know what it is, Dustin? Um, today's date. So next Friday. Is October next, 17th today. So on the 25th. The 25th is when we're going to be starting our uh, Friday live streams, okay? So that will be that. And, uh, yeah, so that's it. That's all I get to say. Got to say. And let's go back to here. The other day. The other day. YouTube question. I'm looking for a big cat 3D anatomical model. Do you have any recommendations? Currently looking at June's anatomy sculptures and 3D total cat model. That's who I was going to recommend. I've got one right up on my desk from him, and they're awesome. So that's that's what you need to get. Really great stuff. Nick says, uh, that's the day Tim gets here, and we are going to Game Studio, so maybe the following week. Oh, yes, that's right. Um, it might be the following week, exactly. So we might we might have another stream next week on Tuesday. Uh, let me see. Should we? Yes. So, okay, so I'm going to take it all back. Forget everything I just said, because I forgot about our schedule. So, schedule? Yeah, our schedule. So we will have this live stream on Tuesday uh, coming up. And then, uh, and then we're going to change that to Friday, uh, the following week, which would be uh, November 2nd, I think. November 1st. So our first Friday live stream will be November 1st. Is there a reason why we're not doing it uh, Friday of uh, this net? Of this Nick, because uh, we have Tim, Tim Hodge, who uh, has done our... our Drawing cartoon animals course, he's coming in that day, oh. and Nick is going to be driving up, and so we're going to be a little bit busy that week or that day. Oh, okay, gotcha. So Tuesday, Nick, Nick Tuesday, week. Tuesday. So just Tuesday, or we're we doing Thursday too? Uh, no, nope, not Thursday. Just Tuesday. Yeah. Just Tuesday. Does this mean we will see you tomorrow again? Talking about the Friday live stream. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, will you be doing a Halloween drawing next live stream? Probably. We like to do that each year, don't we? Yeesh. Even though I don't like to do gruesome art. The one I remember... Did you do the zombie bear last last year? Or yeah, was that the other I think one? that was last year. So here, I'm breaking up the body into the, in those five parts. You got the hips and, and tail second. Well, you got the tail, and then you've got the hips and back legs, and you've got the trunk of the body, and then you got the shoulders and arms right here. Then you've got the neck, which comes down like so. And then you've got the, you know, the head right there. And right now, I've got all of that out of proportion. So this, okay, this is going to go bigger. The heck is going on there? I don't get it. But grabbing this. Warning, no pixels are more than 50% selected. Hey, Gabby just Select got out. I don't know what that means. Good morning, guys. Hey, Gabby. Can I ask him picked up a little gold there? I don't know. You see, if I go this way, will it do the same thing? Why is it saying no pixels are selected? Am I on the wrong layer? Maybe. No, I'm on the right layer. It just keeps saying no pixels are selected. 
There it goes. That was weird. There we go. Just shrink that up just a touch. Hey, Gabby. Sorry, I was got, I got sidetracked. Are you on the background layer? No, I'm not on the background layer. That's that's what that's what was kind of weird. I, I couldn't figure out why it was. I think it was just a glitch, a glitch in the matrix. So I'm gonna get these legs. What? If I'm to do an act. Acrylic, how is the method? Acrylic. Acrylic. <laughs> Come on, man. Acrylic, how is the method? How is the method for doing an acrylic? Yeah. When I do acrylics, I usually start from dark to, and I go to light. And then once I have those the, everything pretty much established with that, then I can go back and forth. But I do start with dark and go to light after I get my drawing done. Acrylic. <laughs> Acrylac. Acrylic. Do you feel perfection is overrated? Perfection? How do you define perfection? So there you go. Yeah, maybe it is overrated. I always say there's no such thing as perfect. Well, uh, it depends on, you know, something can be perfect and it's imperfection. Mark Davies says, hey, Mark Davies. Hi, Aaron. Uh, is the oil painting for the oil painting course you are aiming for, uh, is the oil painting for the oil painting course you are aiming to make? Uh, I think I'm, I'm not quite understanding the question, but this is I'm doing this is a comp that I'm doing for the oil painting for the oil painting course. get these feet. Man, it's hot in here. I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. Oh. When are you going to start doing art videos? When am I going to start doing art videos? What are you talking about? That's all I ever do. <laughs> When am I going to start doing art videos? Maybe I don't know what that question like means. YouTube videos? It's all about, we make YouTube videos all the time. I need more information. Yeah, I, I, that's all. That's all you gave me. So there's a little bit of skin right there that comes through. I want to get this to come down just right. The wrist opens up right there. The foot flares out. <coughs> there we go. Oh, that was from Manny, that question. Where are you going to be doing art videos? Oh. <laughs> Manny. Yellowstone National Park. Yeah. yeah. So Manny uh, was there. This is Manny's second trip to this camp that we stayed at. My third trip to Africa. Um, I think this is Manny's fourth or fifth trip to Africa. Um, and... I'm so grateful to Manny and Chrissy and everyone else that really set this thing up. Um, check out, keep an eye on uh, Expedition Art and uh, the you know the uh, uh, on Facebook. Just go and uh, type in Expedition Art Incorporated, and um, and you'll see some of the things that are going to come out of this. We're going to do we're, we got a really cool video that we're going to be cutting, uh, documentary style that we shot for for uh, while we were there. And we're going to finish it all up with a show, hopefully, in L.A. that we're trying to work out. So we've got a lot of cool things coming up over the next year or so that are all going to be directly derivative from this trip that we took to the Maasai Mara.
and man, uh, Peter Hahn, Manny, Rebecca Knight, uh, Darren Bader, all of them, they freaking killed it on the drawing the live animals from life. Absolutely amazing. Really beautiful work everybody did. I was blown away. Alright, so I've got basically the rough drawing in. <clears throat> Expedition, oh, and if you want the website for Expedition Art, it's uh, expeditionart.org. But I was talking about the Facebook page too, so check out their Facebook page and also go to expeditionart.org and uh, you'll see some really great stuff. Plus, you know, we've got the, the Endangered book that we did. A lot of great stuff. Um, it's all about our slogan for Expedition Art is uh, saving the world one drawing at a time. And it's all about, you know, nature and animals and making sure that we are helping as much as we can. You know, it's something you know, we're all like-minded artists that want to do something good with, with what we do. And so that's what, we've, that's what we're trying to do now. now. And uh, it's pretty cool. So they're great, great people, and uh, I'm an honor. I'm honored to be part of it. So I'm just drawing in very quickly. I think I want to tighten, bring the eye down just a touch. A touch. Just a touch. I'm using my arrow keys. Aaron, do you also have thousands of browser tabs open all the time? I do. Or is it just me? No, I do. I'm, I'm super, uh, super uh, disorganized. Yeah, I'm kind of on the on the same boat. Like for me, not only do I have a lot of tabs, but I usually have them on like two separate windows. Oh yeah, yeah. So like one one window would be for like my like my Facebook, my email, my uh, favorite sto uh, online stores, yada yada yada, and then another window would be for like my music and my YouTube. All oh, right. And then my and then on that one I just have like ten like ten to twenty YouTube videos just all lined up on the tabs. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Hunt's Kickstarter for his graphic novel, The Blacksmith, is up, and it's already fully funded, so you are guaranteed to get a copy. Nick uh, is going to put a link to it up in there. Uh, it's really, really cool. So look for the link. Peter Hahn's graphic novel, The Blacksmith, is up, and it's fully funded, so you are guaranteed. So get in there and support him. Peter Hahn's an amazing artist as well. I've never seen anybody as prolific as Peter. He, uh, he drew more than any of us out there. And uh, and he was doing, you know, we were in the Maasai village, and he's just cranking out these beautiful portraits of Maasai and giving them to him. And, man, I wish I had the ability to do that because he's, he's just so good. And uh, really, really great, great stuff. All right, so <clears throat> we've got this down, and I basically got it in the composition that I want as far as where I want the head to sit, so I'm going to move it a little bit, bring it down. I want that eye kind of on the far third, right about in there. Our latecomer... Uh where in Africa did you uh, did you go? I'm looking to book book up at some point. I went. We went to the Maasai Mara, which is the northern end of the Serengeti. The Serengeti, <coughs> excuse me, the Serengeti goes through Tanzania. It's a much bigger part of uh, environment. Then once it crosses the border into Kenya, it becomes the Maasai Mara, and it's basically the northern tip 
of the Serengeti. So the Maasai Mara, but the Maasai Mara is also very high in elevation. When you start at the Maasai Mara, the Serengeti goes down in elevation. And so it gets warmer and warmer, hotter and hotter, whereas the northern end of, this, of, the, of, of that whole uh, ecosystem, it would, being the Maasai Mara, it, it, it's up higher, it's cooler, it gets more rain, it's more lush, and there's more wildlife there. It's a really beautiful place. Will you ever draw an, an anime character? Would love to see uh, see one done just for the fans. Probably not. <laughs> like, How's that? Yeah, maybe, maybe never. The, I, I think that's that sounds like a plan. Maybe never. <laughs> no, I, I never say never, but no, probably not. Never not right now. say never. Oh, uh, what's the canvas size for this? This is uh, fifteen by twenty. The ultimate canvas size, uh, the final canvas size on the painting, the oil painting is going to be thirty inches by forty inches. So there you go. Uh, how how was the food? Oh, the food was great. Food is absolutely great. We had different uh, soups every night before a meal, and then we had you know all kinds of different dishes: fish, poultry, meat, beef, all kinds of stuff. Uh, we stopped at a restaurant on the way out, uh, which I stop at every time I'm there, called the Carnivore, which is a uh, restaurant where you can get all kinds of exotic meats and stuff uh, from different animals on the Lamara. Uh, not not as much anymore, but uh, we did have some ostrich and camel and uh, crocodile and uh, bull testicles both left and right. Penguin Overlord asks, do you mind if we use some of the photos you posted on Facebook as reference material? I don't mind, just don't sell it as your own, that's all. Manny wrote, Aaron, you need to wear your, your Maasai blanket and sword while drawing this. <laughs> I know, I should. <laughs> it's called the Shuka, Manny. You know that. Come on, Manny. You know better than that. Manny, do the thing. Manny, do the thing. Man, I'm so glad that I didn't get this bug while I was there. So I'm just tying down a few parts of the... of this lion. He's not lion. <laughs> he ain't lion. Oh, Erica Bay just wrote, just booked my airfare for CTN. Can't wait. All right, Erica. We're going to be there as well. <laughs> you two come in. I'd love to see you do more retro sci-fi monsters. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's see what we can do when we do our character or creature design course. I'm thinking about the all the muscle and the bone structure underneath. You know, I'm looking at the photo, but more than the photo, I'm really trying to think about the structure, using my knowledge of anatomy to make the photo make sense when I'm doing the painting. Because photos will lie to you; they will always lie to you. If you don't know, if you don't understand the structure of a creature or an animal that you're drawing. Don't always rely on the photos to tell you all the information. You need to get in there and do your homework because photos, will, you know, the way light falls on forms will deceive you sometimes and it won't, it won't tell you the full picture. But this is a young lion or a, a young uh, male who's uh, he's old enough to have left the pride. He's out on his own, but he's not old enough to kind of take over a pride yet. And so this one and a couple of other ones that were about the same age as him, they're maybe brothers, uh, were out roaming around together. But once again, there's so much game out there, none of these lions were hungry. I'd like to see a werewolf for Halloween. Maybe an Iron Maiden style thing. How's it feel to want? <laughs> like how this person spelled out werewolf. W-A-R-E. 
Well, there you go. Well, that works. That works. That works all right. Wa wa wary. Yeah, but wary. you but you understood what he was writing, or she. <coughs> I mean, Ruku asks, "Have I ever done art of a maned wolf?" I have not. That is a Brazilian, well, South American animal, and I hear they're they're uh, they are kind of their own kind of line on the tr uh, evolutionary tree. They're not really dogs. They're different than dogs, but they are dogs. But they're they're kind of different. They're not wolves. What was the most memorable moment on the trip? Oh man, there's so many. Where do you even start? Uh, you know, our nighttime hunting when we would hunt with the lionesses at night was just. I've never done anything like it. That was really cool. To be there when they would make a kill in the evening under moonlight is just crazy. And, uh, and you know, it's it's moving in a way because it's um, you're watching the life leave one animal and it's giving life to another animal. And there's, you know, there's a timeless, you know, that's how it's happened for thousands of years, millions of years. And, uh, and as hard as it is to watch... This is, you know, at, at the risk of sounding corny, you're really seeing that circle of life happen before you, and, and it's the real deal. It's not the Discovery Channel, you know, and you realize that, you know, we take so much for granted in the way that we get our food and go to the grocery store, and these, you know, these animals live a, a, a survival of the fittest kind of scenario every day, whether you're the prey or, or the predator. And uh, it's tough. It's uh, it's a tough, no forgiveness world. And uh, and you know, it, you're reminded of it every single day. So those are some of my more memorable kind of thoughts. Anyway, you know, is kind of coming to those those philosophical realizations. What's really nice is to be sitting here a week later at my desk doing a painting of one of the lions that I witnessed there. Pretty cool. Except for, except for being sick part. Yeah, the sick part is no good. But, you know what? I'll get over it. <laughs> it got worse last night, so I'm assuming last night and today is going to be the worst of it. It's all going to ease off like, later yeah, in the evening. I'm hoping tonight, tonight's a little better. I already looked up malaria symptoms. I don't have malaria. That's good. Yeah. Because I didn't, I didn't sleep with any mosquito netting, and I didn't, uh, didn't take any anti-malaria medicine. So, probably not the smartest thing, but I think I'm fine. Oh, one cool thing was, you know, we'd have these little bats. I can't remember what kind of bats they are, but they would flutter around inside our, our lodge and our tents and stuff. And I woke up one morning to a little a little breeze on my cheek. I had my eyes closed. My alarm had just gone off, and I, my eyes were still closed. I felt this nice, cool, gentle, like the gentlest little breeze on my cheek. And I opened my eyes, and a bat had just brushed my cheek and flown up and landed in the kind of the netting of the tent right above my head and I said oh good morning and it <laughs> kind of hung out there stretched its wings and then it flew down and fluttered past my cheek again and brushed my cheek and then flew out of the tent it was a really cool way to wake up in the morning either you'll get better or there won't be any streams next week or ever again <laughs> <laughs> you're right <laughs> I'm either going to get better or next week will be no more streams ever <laughs> For a <laughs> Yeah, Manny commented, I'm super happy we all went. A dream come true for me and uh, to take you guys. What an amazing time. It absolutely was an amazing time. It was it's not just the animals, you know, when you do these when you do these trips with like-minded people and artists and everything else. It's not just the animals that you see, but it's the experience of seeing those animals with your friends and with your family, with 
you know these these people have become my family and it's it's you know ex going through that experience together and then talking about it and, and, and you know being in awe about it all together is a really cool experience it's it's amazing Do you like painting with acrylics? I do like painting with acrylics. I don't do acrylics very often, but I do like painting with acrylics. Yep. <laughs> uh, Neo asks, how many people animate on films like The Lion King or Brother Bear? Ultimately, the entire crew, you know, as far as animators, rough animators, we might have as many as 50, you know, between 35 and 50. But as far as the entire crew goes of cleanup artists and background painters and layout artists and uh, everything else, camera operators, all that, we might have about 350 people that are on the entire crew. But there's only about 35 to 50 an, you know, animators that are animating. Everybody thinks everybody on the, on the crew is an animator. That's not true. YouTube comment, you're probably a vampire now. Maybe that's the sickness. That could be. I got bit by a vampire bat. That sounds about right. They might want to keep an eye out with the, for those uh, fangs and watch out for going out in the sunlight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Why, well, hey there, bud. My name's uh, Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we had a couple of bumps there. I did. I, I cut my head open. Oh. Um, <laughs> when we, were, we were chasing one of the lions as she was running in the evening, and we were trying to follow her. Uh, and it's in the moonlight, so you can't see all the all the uh, bumps. And we, we caught one bump, and I was sitting in the back, and I caught that iron bar right in the top of the head and popped my head open. I, I just got rid of the scab. The scab's gone now. Must have smelled uh, very tasty for them uh, vampire bits. <laughs> Uh, Josh asks, have you ever sketched a chameleon? I would love to see a chameleon sketch. Uh, I don't know that I've ever sketched a chameleon. Maybe. In years gone by. So have there's, you, our, there's our lion sketch. Feels pretty good. Yeah. Have you done some Inktobers? I did a few Inktobers. That I, you know, some of my live drawing that I did while I was there on location, I submitted as Inktober. Uh, I haven't done any today. Hi, Aaron. Big fan of yours. Did you ever get to see the Brother Bear video game? I worked on that one one way uh, back in the day. Anyways, I just wanted to say how much I love your art. Thank you very much. I uh, No, I've never seen the Brother Bear video game. I worked on the Lion King video game back in the day. And I worked on the Aladdin video game back in the day. I remember playing the Brother Bear um, Game Boy Advance game back. Back in the day. Back in the day. Way back the other day. Elijah asks, what was it like working with Joaquin Phoenix? I'm very curious. He's an interesting man. You nailed it on the head. He's a very interesting man. <laughs> uh, Joaquin, uh, Joaquin was great to work with. He, he was, uh, he's an actor. <laughs> so, you know, but he was, uh, he was great to work with. Um, we couldn't have done the, had the role be as successful without him. Um, he was great, and uh, and I can honestly say that they picked the right person to play the Joker. He's an incredible actor. Um, it takes a little while for him to get into into character, and, uh, and sometimes it takes a little help and prodding and poking and nudging and anything else that we could do to help him get there. But um, he was great. He was wonderful to work with. He was never he was never a diva, which. Um, you know, I was warned a lot of times by other people about divas on set, and luckily I never, uh, never had to deal with a diva on set ever with any actor that I ever had. Everybody was very wonderful and accommodating, and like divas uh, in like asking like the whole yeah, whole just being jerks really. Yeah. <coughs> I never had any of that. 
Uh, Joaquin was very professional, and uh, he came in did his did his lines. Uh, we worked on them together. He worked really hard at making them real, making them uh, varying them up when we could, and uh, he was great. He was really great, and uh, I feel very lucky to have worked with him, knowing, you know, seeing now that he's doing the uh, the, the Joker and uh, the, you know the attention that he's going to get out of this, I think, is going to be huge. And I'm really, I'm really happy that I was able to have worked with him back in the day. He was awesome. Very, very, very good guy. Have you seen the Saturday Night Live parody of that, The Grouch? Uh, yeah, The Grouch. The Grouch. <laughs> yeah. YouTube comment, hey, I'm watching from Bangladesh. That's awesome. Uh, you probably don't know where that is. Yes, I do. I know where Bangladesh is. But you're my biggest inspiration. Keep up the amazing work and lessons, dude. Yeah, Bangladesh, you're about, probably about, seven, you're probably about eight hours nine hours ahead of me right now so it's late there it's about 11 o'clock at night cool I'm uh I'm honored I love how international our uh our fan base is I really love that we are all over the world <laughs> yes they are <laughs> oh some Somebody earlier commented on the uh, the vampire jokes, like just wear sunblock and make frequent uh, blood bank withdrawals, and you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I got a bass tone now. Now I want to. I'm working on local color, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock that layer, and I'm going to go in, and uh, and and uh, just play with some of this other color. Have you worked with Ed Hooks, the author is acting uh, for animators? Um, I know of Ed Hooks. I don't know that I've worked with him. So this is one of my own textured brushes that I use, that I created. You can get this brush on my website. So by locking the by locking the layer, I'm able to kind of just paint without worrying about messing up the, the you know going outside the lines. Or going outside the lions. And I asked, hello, can you share the reference photo again? Uh, I would like to draw along. Thanks. Yeah, hold on one second, and I will get to that. This will also be the reference photo that I'm going to be using for the oil painting course that I'm going to be doing. Oh, a person by the name of Fans of Fans says, hey, Aaron, I'm your biggest air conditioner. <laughs> awesome so there's the photo hurry up and take a picture of it or grab a free, uh, frame grab of it hang on let me uh, move. there we go screen grab screen grab it folks screen grab it come get it while it's hot alright putting it back now there we go now there we go there we go dear bud there you go, Anna. I hope that helps. They tend to gray out quite a bit. They get nice and gray. Especially in the tail. When you get some gray in the legs there. And these young lions, they tend to still have some of the kind of the, the little spots and stuff from cubs that cubs have on them. Mm. 
just kind of modeling this a little bit. Doing this very quickly. So for, for those of you that are just joining, I've got a, a brand new live course coming up on December 7th on creature design, believable creature design. We're going to be doing that December 7th, uh, just like we did with our character design course a few weeks ago. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, for those of you who are just joining, go over to creatureartteacher.com slash live and you'll see more information on it. Uh, we're going to have a blast. I'm going to be covering you know, animal anatomy, musculature, grouping the muscles, how that works in the real world, and then recombining some of those muscles, changing proportions, thinking about environment and how you can combine them together and create something new altogether, but making something believable. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Hi, Aaron. Well, your oil painting... Uh, be in the traditional manner or on a computer? Thanks. It's oil painting, so it'll be traditional. I'm not doing computer or digital painting. I'm doing oil painting. So it will be traditional. <laughs> Come on, man. question hey Aaron, would learn uh, would, uh, would learning human anatomy help for someone who would like to become a creature designer absolutely any kind of anatomy uh, is going to help you absolutely so I'm just hitting a few areas here and there keeping it really simple and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to start hitting uh, some of the shadow areas I'm creating a layer on top setting that to multiply and I want to I'm going to keep the shadow areas in the warm gray area for right now and then I'm going to cool them off later I'm going to go to my other drawing brush that I like to use. I'm just going to draw in where I think the light, looking at the reference, actually I want to, I want to have all of this in shadow, all of the back end of the cat in shadow. I'm going to change that, change it from the reference. When roughly will the oil painting course be done for? We're hoping to have it done in the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to start painting on it on Monday. And I'm hoping to have the entire thing painted within a week and a half. So that by Thanksgiving, we will have the course done. And we'll have, we'll have the whole course done tomorrow. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> Imagine just snap, done. Kyrele, uh, Kyrela asks on YouTube, uh, I was really hoping you would do the creature design. I signed up instantly. <laughs> Good. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully we've got enough time in the day. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating shadow. I want that back end to be in shadow. Like he's standing 
behind a rock and a bush and it's catching light and there's definitely light from above coming down this is high light so maybe he's under a tree and it's he's just coming out of the out of the branches here Just like so. Oh, Austin just, just wrote, Love you, Dad. Love you, Austin. That's my daughter. Hey, sister, do your best, Jagger. You'll get that in just a minute. <laughs> really excited to have my friend Tim Hodge coming into town in the next, next week or a week after next. It's going to be awesome. Get ready to do another fun course with him. This is where the getting the shadows just right because this is light from above. If I sign up for the creature design course but can't watch it all because uh, I have chronic health issues, I might get dizzy and <laughs> sick or something even more, even more gross partway through. Uh, will I be able to access the recording later on? Yes, you will all get a copy. If you sign up for it and can't be there, you will have a copy of it to access later. Oh, your brother just came on. Travis! <laughs> they just wrote, I don't love you. I love <laughs> you. <laughs> My brother Travis is on. Who's also an animator and storyboard artist up in Seattle. Look him up, Travis Blaze. So right now I'm just drawing in these shadow shapes. That's really all I'm focused on. Just to get a sense of how that, sh that light and shadow is going to play on the cat. It really starts to define the form. Was that the Tim Hodge that was the sixth person on the moon? Yes. Jim Jackson was the 11th? 11th, so Tim beat him out. Warren asks, a son called Dustin and a daughter named called Austin. Did you ever get confused when Aaron was shouting upstairs for you? <laughs> well, it was funny because it was uh, their mother was Karen. So it was Karen and Aaron, Austin and Dustin. The rhyming family. They were the rhyming. Yeah, but you always mixed me up with uh, Travis. With your, I know. With I your always brother's I, name. I know. I always called Dustin Travis. Very weird Freudian thing going on. I guess Freudian is sexual, not, not Freudian. Some kind of psychological thing for sure. Not Freudian. I'm liking these shadow shapes on here. It's very, very cool. I went to the event in Orlando and I loved it. Uh, was there a video made uh, from that? I saw something uh, in my email. I can't remember. I know we we did send some videos. If you guys, if you were there at the event, remember we were talking about some of the uh, videos that I was using for animals, and I we told you that we would send them for you. So that's what we sent. We sent you uh, the animal reference that I was using. Uh, the, and we did do some filming in the background, but we never made a video for it. It was just kind of an archive. Right. <clears throat> I 
Henry, do you ever use masks when painting daily, digitally in Photoshop, by the way? Because of you, I now have a 24-inch antique. Awesome machine. <laughs> that makes me happy. Cool. Uh, no, I don't usually use masks. I try to paint uh, as close to traditional as possible, so I, I don't. Kevin asks, do you ever, do you have your reference constantly open on another screen, or do you only bring it up occasionally? I always have it open on another screen. I don't always look at it. Once I, once I get something down, then um, I'll get, you know, I'll start working away at it, and then the reference just becomes something to gauge it by, I guess. <coughs> This feels like we've got the form going right. I'm liking this. I'm digging it. So you can see, here's the difference. If you look at the back end of the cat, so if you look at the back end of the cat here, and the in the reference in the back end, what I've done, what I've done is uh, I want him coming out of shadow. So I'm adding that shadow um, covering up completely on the back end so that it's going to draw more attention to his the front part of his body. Now theoretically, excuse me, I'm a little sick here. I gagged a little bit there. That was a little rough. <laughs> now theoretically, I could, I mean, I could cover up more with shadow. I could cover up his paws and all that. Uh, down at the bottom, but I, I'm liking that pattern. I like what's on there, and uh, I'm just going to go with that for right now and just see what, see how it looks. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start putting in a background now as well, and I want to start working that out. Now, one of the things I want to do on the painting is push that background way back using atmospheric perspective, more than what's in the photograph, so that it feels like we have some dust and everything, and we get some, uh, we can get some depth in the in the uh, in the painting itself. And so that's what I'm going to start working on. You have an event on the seventh of December, and I just saw that now. But I already took year a year class, so do I have to pay for this event? And if I have to, um, can I wait next month for that, or do I have the obligation to pay now? No, you can pay whatever you want. the The event is be, is on December seventh. You can pay for it any time up to up to the event. Just know that there's limited space on the event. So um, you know if it sells out then you're going to miss out. But we'll be doing more. We're going to be doing a lot more of these live events in the future. They've become really popular and it's a great way for us to get out to a lot of you. Dustin, can you move me off the layers? They want to see the layers. Can you move me over to the left side? Can I have your mouse, please? Yes. Thank you. Now let Dustin move me over just a, just a second. It's over here. There it goes. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. I'll move it over. Just so right now, I've just got a very simple layer system. I've got the first layer is the very rough drawing. Second layer is the tied down drawing. Third layer, which is underneath everything, is the local color and then the uh, layer on top is my multiply layer, that's the blend mode, and it's the shadow layer. So right now I'm going to create another layer behind, uh, just above the background layer, and I'm going to create the background. And I'm just going to go really rough with it. Have you seen Life of Pi, and what did you think of it if you did? I loved it. Yes, I did see it, and I loved it. Read the book as well. Loved the book. I thought they did a great job matching up with what was in the book. 
So I want to go cooler, a little bit more atmospheric as it goes back, as it recedes. I understand you're doing shadows, but in the beginning when you started uh, this piece, you said you you work dark to light. What makes you do the shadows last? No, no, no. I don't. I, I'm not. I don't work dark to light on a digital. I work dark to light on acrylic. I think you missed um, the first part of that question. When I work in acrylic, I work from dark to light, but not not when I'm working this way. Just for the sake of tradition, in case uh, no one's asked yet, uh, do you use any particular brushes, and might there be some way to acquire them? Yes, I've sell, I sell a whole bunch of brushes on my website, creatureartteacher.com. All the brushes that you see me using, uh, with the exception of this one right here, but I'm going to change over because I don't like this one right now. Um, this brush right here, uh, this brush is one of my texture brushes. And I, all of these are sold on my website, creatureartteacher.com. For the latecomers, Aaron, are you sick? <laughs> I'm very <laughs> sick. Is someone asking if I'm sick? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm very sick. Yes, I am. In your opinion, who's scarier, Scar or Shere Khan? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, see, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I would say Shere Khan because it's like you. Yeah, I'll say Shere Khan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, because he like he has those kinds of feelings where like if you say the wrong thing, like if you were to to be in a conversation with him, like if. Say the wrong thing, he'll reply calmly, followed by a slash to the face. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> While Scar is more just all talk. Yeah. Do you have any courses on background and atmosphere drawing and composition? I always struggle with detailed trees, rocks, and even the ground. I don't, but we will be soon. We'll be getting more of those. I think I'm going to actually cover up this. Emma Jensen says, all signed up for creature design. Can't wait. Awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. A to the J on Twitch says, Hey Aaron, I just punched my ticket to the Creature Design Workshop too. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so... Some of the folks are having a conversation about about your sickness. It's like, and some are replied saying, "Yeah, he's sick, but he's also sick." But <laughs> <laughs> well, he's standing like in some dappled light. I'm just roughing this in really quick, just so we can get a sense of it. Nick says Scar because Scar plotted to kill his own family. That is pretty brutal. Shere Khan has no family because I think he killed his own family. <gasps> he already did it without the need of hyenas. <laughs> Look, like, Scar's the planner while Shere Khan actually does the action himself. All right, so I got a little saucing there. I'm not crazy about the background right now, but I'm gonna work it out. I'm gonna work it out, man. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm gonna work it out. Are you sure about that? Yes. 
All right, so let's put another layer on top. We're going to set that to overlay, so I'm going to brighten up some of these areas. And I'm going to use my brush for that. I think the stream is starting to slowly but surely transition to a Scar versus Shere Khan conversation. <laughs> I figured as much. <laughs> uh, somebody mentioned about my, my metal voice I just did. <laughs> it's very metal. Wrote <laughs> Dustin's metal. Metal voice is honestly everything. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm adding a hi <clears throat> highlights. Hot areas where the sun's hitting. No real details yet, just, just trying to hit the highlights. We can work it out. <laughs> we can work it out. Work what out? What are you talking about, Nick? I I don't understand. Have you seen the new trailers for uh, Pixar's Onward and the new Jungle Cruise movie and uh, with uh, Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt? Is there a movie that Dwayne Johnson is not in? That is a very good question. <laughs> That's got to be a new Saturday Night Live skit. It's, yeah, it's got to. Uh, no, I've, not, I've, I've seen the ad. <coughs> I've seen that there is a Jungle Cruise movie. I saw it still for it. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Are you seeing the new but, uh, trailer for Onward? Which one's Onward? Um, it's the fantasy... Oh, yeah, from Pixar? Yeah, from Pixar. Yeah. It's starring uh, Chris Pratt and Tom Holland. Tom Holland is starting to get everywhere, too. Tom Holland is so appealing. Everybody loves Tom Holland. Oh, yeah. And, um... But there's also... Dr. Doolittle. That yeah. They're... Their uh, trailer just released a few days ago. Did yep, you see that? I did. I didn't watch it, but I uh, saw that it was out. Okay. I just a lot of this stuff came out while I was in Africa, so I didn't. I could see. I, believe it or not, we had we had a slight internet connection while we were in Africa and at our camp out in Masaimara. I wasn't able to like surf the web or anything, but I was able to retrieve emails and things like that. It was pretty wild. Yeah, the way that, Is that rain. I heard some rain. I don't know. But from hearing, from watching the trailer, like the animals can talk. Yeah. So it feels like a mix between the old and, well, it's between like the original Dr. Doolittle and the Eddie Murphy Dr. Doolittle. Because in the original Dr. Doolittle back then, None of the animals talk, but it was from the. He was able that, to understand them. Yeah, he was able to understand them, but he was also able to like explain to others what they were what they were saying. All oh, right. But in the Eddie Murphy, like yes, yeah, only he could hear, but we could hear hear the do the animals too from his point of view. Right. And so it just turned to this weird, quote unquote, weird comedy. Hybrid. Comrade. Somebody. Hybrid. Hybrid. Yeah. So So I'll say it's a it's a hybrid between hybrid mix between the two Doctor Doolittles into this one big Disney Doctor Doolittle. Yeah. Which I'm actually kind of okay with. I'm glad. I'm glad you're okay with that. <laughs> 
So I'm trying to get some cool in the in the fur here. Some cool areas. It's, a comment. <clears throat> it's weird seeing Robert Downey Jr. starring in anything else after the Avengers phenomenon. I know. <laughs> He's got to go on and make a living, man. Yeah. Well, I heard that they're they're doing a third Sherlock Holmes. Although I don't know if it's concrete. Man, your whole it's bizarre that your whole career is based on sequels, you know? Yeah. Well, that's why a lot of movies, that's why a lot of the movies coming out are these days. No, I know. Are it's... are sequels among sequels, or remakes? They're either sequels, remakes, or in or small independent films. So here we're going to go in and just get a little darker in some of the shadow areas. I need to be a little darker. Like in his butt area here. His boss. When you were a kid, did all your friends ask you to draw all kinds of silly things for them? Yes. All the time. All the time. I was telling the guys my first my first business I ever had. I was in fourth grade. I was making tattoos on paper with uh, food coloring, and I would sell them for seventy five cents a piece or fifty cents a piece. I can't remember. At school, I'd come home at night, and I would spend the night making as many tattoos as I could. Usually snakes and you know things like that, skulls. And then I'd go back to school the next day and I'd sell them for 50 cents a piece, done with food coloring. They're just, you know, temporary tattoos. And uh, I did pretty good until one day the principal got on the, on the uh, intercom and said, whoever's selling tattoos, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the end of that. Do you always use grayish blue for shadows and bright yellow for light, or do you switch it up? I switch it up, but in this case, this is pretty natural sunlight, so I'm going cool and warm. Twitch question. Have you seen the Klaus trailer? I have. SBA Studio Sergio Pablo San Racing Studios coming to Netflix. I have. I can't wait. November 15th on Netflix. Yeah, that looks good, I'm too. good friends with Sergio Pablos, and I couldn't be happier for him. It's interesting how big of a difference um, the postman's uh, voice changed from the first, like, pilot trailer yeah. to well, or that was like all test trailer. Yeah, that was all temporary stuff. Yeah. YouTube question, do you ever have to deal with depression or anxiety in your career? Of course. Very much so. I've dealt with some crazy depression and anxiety. Um, many of you know my backstory. Uh, Dustin's mother, my wife, she passed away 12 years ago while we were working and everything was, you know, it's hard to lose your wife, your husband, your mother, and uh, we all went through it, and, uh, and to this day, it's still hard to, you know, you're, it's something that you have to learn to live with, and, and you get therapy for, and you work with people, and you talk to people, and yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff out there that, that can get you down, and if it's something you're dealing with now, you need to get to, to, to get, get together with somebody that can help you, because uh, I was going down a dark road, when I lost my wife Karen, and it wasn't until I got together with somebody to talk to that it really started to help me out. So if that's if you find yourself in that position, make sure you get out there and find someone that can help you. Would I be able to see your construction of the painted uh, composition of this? Uh, when and where? The construction of the painted composition. You mean just the drawing? I think so. 
Here's the drawing. I turn off the background. Here's our, so it started out. I'll, I'll just show you how it started. So I did the quick drawing like this, sketched it very quickly. Then I over the top, I kind of redefined it a little bit. I put some local color underneath. Started adding some shadows right there. Added a background, more shadows right there, and added some light areas. And right here, I started to add some cool areas in the shadows, opaque. And then on top, I'm adding some even darker shadows. <clears throat> YouTube question. Will you be going to Kenya again? If so, when? Um, I'll definitely be going to Kenya again. We don't know when yet. Um, we'd love to go next year, but it doesn't look like we'll be able to do it next year. Um, we're not sure yet. Because I want to bring family as well. But uh, uh, we're definitely going again, yes. Bo show. Facebook question. If you haven't been asked yet, have you seen The Joker? It's the feel-good movie of the year. I was just about to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, no, I haven't seen it yet. It came out right when we the day we were leaving for, for Kenya. So I have not seen it. He announced me as the Grouch. <laughs> I love that SNL skit of uh, instead of Joker is Grouch. Yeah. What was his name that, he, that that did that? It was he's the uh, sheriff. Yeah, I know. I can't remember his name. He did that so perfectly well. Will we see a peak of the oil painting process in the live streams? Uh, maybe just a little bit, but I'm really going to save it for those that are going to get the uh, <coughs> the uh, the course itself. So, but you will get a peak of it, yeah. And I always put out uh, one of the tapes, one of the videos goes out uh, when I release the course, so you'll get at least part of it for free. Gabby just bro. Wait, Aaron, was this your first time in Kenya? No, this is my third time in Kenya. My third time. And it was amazing. Mariana Garcia asks, have you ever thought that you're drawing Planet Earth fan art? Uh, no, I've never thought of it that way. That's kind of cool. See, right now, I'm not quite sure what I want to do with this background. I, I've got the opportunity to, to keep it like it is up there. David Harbour. But I don't know that I, I like that. I might bring it down. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah, the guy that did the parody is David Harbour. All right. YouTube question. Dustin, can you remove Aaron? We want to see the hind leg, please. Yeah, pay attention to that stuff. If I'm blocking stuff, take me out. Okay. Okay. Can you talk of the rush behind some of the animal encounters? Well, the biggest rush is, you know, watching a predator take down prey. There's something about the the primalness of that and you know, it's it's a it's a tough thing to watch. Something here. I like this. I like what's going on in here. What do you think? I like it. I like it. I like it. I'm gonna lock it. When do you plan okay. on releasing the new oil painting course? And uh, will just, you? We just talked uh, about that. Newcomer. <laughs> but uh, will you explain oil painting basics, like in your awesome watercolor course? Yes, we are going to do that. Uh, it's going to be in the next few weeks. Hopefully by December. Uh, we're going to have that. Uh, uh, or by, I'm sorry, not December, by uh, Thanksgiving. 
and uh, there we go. Might want to get some of the skies. I'm liking some of the skies. Twitch question: If you look at Gil Ever Ev Elvgreen's, uh, if you look at Gil Elvgreen's work, he almost never puts any cool lighting on skin tones. Uh, he almost never puts it in, the sh in his shadows or as a grim bouncing light. Almost all his pieces are lit entirely warm. Do you have any idea why that might be? Because that's his style. It just might be his preference uh, for doing it. For me, um, I think we have warm and cool all over the place. And I like to, I like to portray it that way. But like, for instance, in this case... Um, you know, as this leg kind of rounds away from us, it's going to catch some of that cool light of the sky, that cool blue light of the sky, and you're going to get a little bit of light as it warms up right here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but was Glenn Keane one of your supervisors when you worked at Disney? He was my mentor. He taught me animation. Did anything crazy or scary happen on your safari trip? No. I mean, crazy, if you define, you know, hunting with lions at night and watching them take down a kill, then yeah, that's crazy. Uh, nothing scary, I wouldn't say. There we go. Mark asks, which do you prefer, oil or acrylic painting? Also, which is the best for beginners? You know, I, it, I don't know which... Probably acrylic, because it's a little bit more forgiving. Uh, but I love uh, oil. I like the, the richness of oil. Which I know you can get with acrylic as well, but it's a little harder, at least for me. So I like oil painting a little bit better. I like acrylics okay. I mean, I, I, I don't use them as much. So what I want to do now is pull up a background. I'm going to go back to my referrals. My referrals. See these backgrounds back here? I like these. There we go. I'm liking this. Where the warthogs are. I wonder if I can edit this so I can get a little bit more variation in that sky. There we go. There's something there. YouTube comment, the blue changes it a lot. really brings out the silhouette more. Yes, I, I agree. Nick says, I find that most beginners gravitate to acrylics because oil requires a lot more time and patience. It does. It requires a lot more time for drawing and that sort of thing. I'm going to go ahead and say done on this one. Did you ever animate <coughs> anything before Disney? No, I didn't. No, Disney was my first job in animation. That's where I learned animation. Here we go. So I'm just going to look at this for a little bit. Use that as a bit of reference. Because that hill is, you know, the reason why we're seeing so much sky there is that hill is turning away from us. We're actually looking up a hill. There we go. 
also want to get some warmth in this as well. So, here we are there. Let's get a paint right on top. Let's just see what we get here. So now I'm just going to play with some of these shapes a little bit. I read an interview recently where you said the animation part wasn't clicking at, at first for you at Disney. It took a few weeks. Was that uh, what was the uh, what was that struggle? I just couldn't see the animation. I really had a hard time seeing. Uh, seeing how to move things and how to how to I was so focused on the movement that I was missing the the emotion and all of that and I couldn't I was having a hard time getting it all to click together really was what the problem was and uh, and it just took it took time for that to happen then all of a sudden it just happened it was very very cool it just it was like a, a, a a light went off in my head and I, I really struggled with it in the beginning so what I'm doing is I'm painting the shadow colors right now of the clouds in here the shadow colors for right now. I'm going to go in with some, some of these lighter colors. Nice warm cool gray there. Change that to here. Warm that right up. Oh, Lauren Black just joined. Hey there, Lauren. Hello, Lauren. Just experimenting, going very abstract with some of the clouds in the background. Basically, now for something completely different. Yeah. Libby on YouTube says, "For oil, you almost have to have another project on the go to work on while the oil dries. Mm, sometimes depends on the scale of the project. But yes." At Disney as an animator, did you check spacing and arcs and all the tedious things, or did you leave that for uh, the assistants? You can't animate without understanding spacing and arcs, so that's all part of the job. So the assistants, no, did they, they did not handle spacing and arcs. I, as the animator, handled the spacing and arcs. YouTube question, is coloring and shading all the time all the same brush, or do you use multiples? I'm basically using the same brush here and there throughout. I've got a, a two or three different brushes that I use. Nick asks, is this the same proportions as the final canvas? Because I think you could 
have some fun making him in a wide landscape, I bet, for a sense of scale. This is the same uh, proportion. I've got another one that I'm going to do for a wider one, but I wanted this one just to be kind of a study, a big study for him, and so we could get into detail on uh, the cat itself. So that's why I decided to do it this way. This is the final composition. I'm just not there yet with the uh, clouds. I'll get there eventually. Matt on YouTube asks, considering the size and detail, about how many man hours do you think the actual oil painting will take? It's probably going to take about 40 or 50. Because I don't, I don't paint really tight either. Are you putting Mufasa in the clouds? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll work this a little while longer and then my cold is just getting the better of me and I'm going to take a break. But I'll finish this during the week and I'll show it on the next live stream. Termite mounds everywhere out there. Oh, in Africa? Yeah. You know, I miss the rains down in Africa. <laughs> Dustin doesn't get it. So I wasn't... I, I was looking at comments. <laughs> what did you say? So I miss the rains down in Africa. Oh. Uh, so totally. the rain <laughs> in Africa. <laughs> I miss the rains down in Africa. So, this might require a different background altogether. I'm not sure yet. Uh, it's not too bad. Now that I've flopped it, I, I can get this working. I can get this working, guys. Don't worry about it. I can get it working. Are, are you sure about that? Yeah, I can, go, I can do it. There's going to be little things to consider. But I can do it. Man, I just wrote, there's that. nothing more 100 men or, or more could ever do. True. All right. See, I wish I, I'm, I'm thinking that behind the, his head it needs to be dark. So I'm wondering if I should put like a, a storm in the background, like a darker storm. Thing. I think my choir did that song uh, for one of our end of the end of the year shows. Uh, I think it was my so my junior year. Oh yeah, yeah. I think we performed that that song. Let's put the rains down in Africa. Sure, why not? So it's going gonna to pop him really good. And I can add more shadow to the background. <coughs> <coughs> Nick's got Toto playing. <laughs> Did you learn some cool animal facts while you were in Africa? Um, Besides the fact about rain? I learned a few. See, I like that better, don't you? The the dark the dark yeah, sky. Yeah. yeah. And then then what I can do is I can add some shadow. 
See, that pops them really good. And I can play with that. Now it kind of looks like uh, some rainfall coming from a distance. Yeah. It's a nice... It's a nice clash of light. See, this is light. this is why I like you guys to watch because so much of what I do is experimentation. I'm trying to find the thing that's going to work. Blow that up. So you can see it. Twitch question. Hi, Aaron. I have a question. If you know how to draw on paper, is it easy to translate into computer painting, or does it take a whole new process of learning? Well, it really depends on the tool. Uh, honestly. If you're using a Cintiq like I'm using here, do you have this? Do you have the stage? I can put that up. Yeah. There we go. Um, like I use a Cintiq right here, and this, for me, is really uh, is been a really big help for adapting to uh, digital painting because it's very similar to traditional painting and drawing. So there's something I'm liking better. We didn't get a lot of rain there, down in Africa. We got a little bit. Did you miss the rains down there? I do miss the rains down in Africa now. <laughs> Just getting a little bit of... As we were flying back into Nairobi, I caught some of the rain from the plane. That was kind of cool. YouTube question. Hey, Lord Blaze. How are you and Dustin Master doing today? <laughs> Dust Master doing today. We are doing very well, thank you. Dust Master? Who's Dust Master? <laughs> I got dust in my boots. That feels a little better, don't you think? Yeah. We got an in st incoming storm coming. With some of the light rays coming. Got an through. incoming storm coming. Heavy storm coming through. Come through, 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 through. I like yeah, those uh, light rays. Are those light rays coming down? Well, it's rain. It's uh, some of the rain that's catching light as it's falling. Oh. Good. That's yeah. what that is. That's from observation. You know, you get out there and you observe. Yeah. You see it happen. A color. So here, what I'm going to try to do is create some shadow, just to see what it looks like. Just to give it a bit of a whirl. How did you like animating on Procreate? I loved it. Oh, that's the other thing too. Yeah, while I was um, while we were traveling, I got the beta version of the new Procreate and um, animated with it. I just did a little lion walk cycle. It was nothing major, but uh, it's super cool. I'm really looking forward to doing something cool with it. So here, I just wanted to like the horizon. Look like it's going into shadow underneath that storm. So I'm, I'm keeping everything very rough right now just to work out this composition. This I feel is going to work a lot better. Do you dislike anime uh, art style? And if yes, why? No, I don't dislike it. I just think it's overdone by a lot of people. But I don't dislike it. I think it becomes a crutch for a lot of young artists that they learn that style and they get stuck in that style. Um, and I, I know there's a lot of different styles within the anime uh, genre, but I also feel that um, there's a lot of it that's the same, and a lot of art, young artists are are just not pushing themselves uh, to break out of that. So, there's my, that's my short answer. I don't dislike it, I just think it's used as a crutch for young artists. 
Uh, Eric on Twitch says lightning in the clouds, perhaps. Well, I'm not sure. I don't know if I want. I don't want to draw a lot of attention. I want this to be the most contrasting area. So if the the, the to me these storm clouds are underneath kind of the thunderhead and not catching the light that might be coming straight down. Any plans to transform the brushes you do for Photoshop into, into Clip Studio? No, but we are talking about doing them for Procreate. Nick says, craziest thing I learned in Africa aside from Jorge and the Lions is that Peter Hahn draws with both hands. That's right, Peter Hahn does draw with both hands. He actually trains, he pushes himself to draw with his weak hand. I thought that, I've never heard anybody that did that. That's crazy. Really, he does Peter Hahn is crazy. He's a crazy man. He's a crazy man. There. What I do is I, I shrink it up quite a bit when I'm looking at the range down in Africa. That feels better to me. I'm just going to warm all this up just a touch back here. And I'll get into that background a little differently. But I've got something now that I, I can at least, I feel like I can get a good feel for. I like that background. I'm going to pull up some more reference. Uh, right now, this is just my version of what a storm cloud is. I want to make sure that I've got it nice and accurate. There we go. So now, I can get in here, kind of work some of this. <laughs> Wild well, dogs cry out in the night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Twitch comment. The storm looks much better than the blue sky did. Really pops a line out against the background. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, I thought the same thing. So that's why I'm, I'm definitely going to do that. <laughs> Hello, Aaron. Welcome back. During your Disney days, when a production hits a snag or when the overall morale was low in the studio, what did you guys do to lift spirits and other people's spirits? Well, we, uh, we drink beer. We we had a lot of parties here and there. Um, um, I, as a director, was given a certain allowance for beer each week. And then drink more beer. So that we could uh, have little parties and get-togethers and that sort of thing. And that all worked out pretty well. Um, but we, uh, you know, the morale, usually when the movie was doing well, morale was well, was good. And, uh, and so, you know, directors had a really good way of keeping everybody involved. Because when you don't know what's going on, that's when morale starts to, starts to go away. That's you! Oh, ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's oh, you. Let me make sure that no one sees that. Yeah. There we go. Wow. That's almost the same level as my sneezes. I know. Holy schmoleys. Oh, it snuck up on me. But I'm just hitting little details here. But as far as morale goes, you know, we were always really... We never really had too much low morale. It really it wasn't something we dealt with a lot. Kendra Williford asks, hey Kendra, I'm kind of late to the party on this one, but how large will the painting, the oil painting be? The oil painting is going to be 30 by 40 inches. It's going to be large. It's going to be huge. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, we had a studio band as well. Yeah, Nick just was quick to point that out. We had a, we played a lot of music back in the day. We all we all played you know musical instruments, and we had a band, and that really helped with morale as well. Our good friend Ronnie Williford was in the band. Was he though? He was. So I'm just very quickly going in here and just hitting some of this stuff. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it because this is just really a sketch. I want to make sure that the composition is basically working. Which I believe it is. Yes, I can care. I can care. Yes, sir. Was Ronnie the twelfth man to walk on the moon? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he was. So who's the 13th? Oh, lucky number 13. That was me. Oh, that was you? Yeah. Awesome. Lucky number Slevin. Lucky number Slevin? Yeah. That was a, I always enjoyed that movie back then. I know. I know you did, son. Yeah. Sound like it's coming from our yard. It's probably like right next to the fence. Maybe they're finally cleaning up that property that's right next door. Could be. Could very well be. That could be the answer, young young fella. That definitely could be the answer right there. All right. So I'm just getting into a couple of things here. YouTube comment. I got a job to have money to buy your courses. Now that I bought a lot of them, I don't have time to do them because I'm working so much. That's a strange feeling. <laughs> hey, at least you got a job. <laughs> Thank you for purchasing them. <laughs> and when you when you do get to them, you're going to you're hopefully you're going to learn a lot. <laughs> That's funny. Also reading uh somebody wrote Aaron on the movie, like, hey guys, it's a bit hard to breathe here, no? I uh, mean, it's like, <laughs> 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 well, the guys thought I was gonna die on my on the trip because of my sleep apnea, and I stopped breathing. <laughs> oh yeah, because you're like, <laughs> and then I just stop. <laughs> I thought I'd breathe. Then you stop for like a good solid like minute and a half that's why I can hold my breath so long yeah like honestly if you if you didn't have ab such abnormally large lungs I don't know what what yeah. you'd do that's what that's what helps me <laughs> Nick says, the good news is that when you buy our courses, you get lifetime access so that they will always be there for you. That is exactly right, Nick says. So when you buy those courses, a person that you don't have time to watch them now because you're working, you actually have, you can go back anytime. Will you watch the new Terminator movie? That's yes. I, I definitely plan to. I like any Terminator movie. 
my favorite series. I'll be back. Hey, Vedanta. Hey. Hi. I'm just gonna go get Gloria. Am I blocking? No, I'm good. All right. So just drawing in some fur. Fur. Which of the Terminator movies was your favorite? Terminator 2. 2. Followed by Terminator 1. Of course. Then there's 3. Then there's Salvation. And Genesis. Yeah, which I, I actually know. worked on Genesis. Did you? Yeah, I, I did uh, 3D for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, we got to hang out with Darren Bader, the art director for Red Dead Redemption Games. He was super <gasps> cool. He lives in Florida now, so perhaps he'll join us on a future stream. I forgot to tell you that. No. Yeah, so Darren, well, Darren Bader is the guy that told me I was going to die every night. <laughs> really? Yeah, he's like, dude. I'm he goes, I'm worried about you, man. <laughs> God, I love those Red Dead Redemption games. Well, he's the art director. It, it would be and awesome man, to holy him. mackerel, is he a good painter? Oh, really? Darren Bader, look him up, you guys. He's so good. You like the Jason Bourne movies? Yeah. Aye, I do. Aye. Aye, I love the Jason Bourne. Did you see the uh, the video of the guy at his own funeral that left a, uh, that oh, left a message? Yes. Hey! Hey! <laughs> let me out! I'm not dead yet, let me out! Time for me to rest. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I feel like I should do. I should have a recording like that too. Like, hey guys, uh, I'm still here. <laughs> you guys gonna bury me yet? <laughs> Don't worry about me. I got got my Xbox ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be before you, so <laughs> I'm going to do mine. Yeah, for you to be like, Hey guys, Aaron Blaze here, and uh, welcome to the funeral. Hey Blazes, so either one of you guys, uh, do you know anybody that made a good Florida Man story? Uh, I like the one that just came out recently where a guy tried to get an alligator drunk. <laughs> well, I think talking about like our own personal, like what if it's the either of us or, or our own family or friends that can be Flor Florida Man. Uh, like Rob Reed. Robbery with be Florida, with the man. tumbling of the the whole tumbling with the beer story and the pear sale. Yeah. Or you you as a kid with the stuff with the stuffed gator. Yeah. You'd, be, you'd be a Florida boy, not yeah. then, not a Florida man, but Florida. I used boy. to sleep with a stuffed alligator. <laughs> a real stuffed alligator. <laughs> if you go to sleep with a, with a stuffed dead alligator, you might be a Florida boy. <laughs> I did. Oh, yeah, that's right. If you have a brother that was on cops, you <laughs> might be a Florida man. <laughs> Yes, my brother was on Cops. <laughs> not, he, a, not a brother that any of you know. And oh. He's like five. He's like five foot nothing. 
It was going against a six, six foot bouncer. Yeah. We like, that uh, is the that's the experience we don't we don't speak of. No. <laughs> <laughs> But they're Florida experiences, nonetheless. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Although, at that time, we were living in California, but... Yeah. Still, though. <laughs> Still. Still, though. It was the other time when we um, almost got hit by the water spout, and instead of heading straight back to shore, we just went to a new swimming point. Yeah. In the Key West. I do remember that. Like, oh yeah, Twister. So I'm getting something that I like. This is coming together pretty well. i got a lot more work to do with the background, but I think this is going to make a great painting. Um, I'm liking the... I'm just going to keep working this. i got to work this background a bit more. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna keep it fairly loose too, though, as well, and um, that's kind of stylistically where I like to go with it. Can you blow it up? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. We get rid of this. So this is where I'm going with it. I'm gonna put another layer on top. Set that to multiply. I'm gonna go with a cool color now, just to see. Somebody commented, my, my niece's mother-in-law was on live PD, but that was in New England. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go a little darker on this foreground, but right in, the, right in on shadow. The, some shadow on the butt. Shadow on the butt. Butta, butta, butt. Butta, butta, butt. butt. So for the oil paintings, will you be doing any live streams during uh, during the oil painting? No, the live stream is going to be for a brand new course. So, um, no, I will not be. So it's going to be specifically for the course on Yes. See, yeah, that made it feel a little better. I like having that, that back end a little darker. Give it a little more contrast. I'm going to get in here in that background. Oh, even warmer with it. It looks so tiny on the OBS screen. Sorry, I just gotta... Well, I'd love to see Aaron doing some oil sketches. Oh, I will. I'll do those too. I've heard of oil painting, but not oil sketching. Yeah, it's just it's just loose painting. Oh. Oh, okay. Now it all makes sense. We get some light in there. Get some contrast between those legs and the background. Why are you? Why did you make it so tiny? Because I, because it, I can see it as a uh, composition better when it's tiny. Mm. Well, check. And here I like to reverse it. So like now, now that I'm looking at it, I might go even darker. So now I'm going to put another layer on top. Set it to multiply. Go back to my cool colors again. Just to see how it's going to look. What all like uh, questions? That's okay. I'm going to be done here in a minute. I'm surprised you've been able to hold hold on for this long. 
Oh man, I'm so sick. So I'm going really quick in here. Just looking at, see how loose I'm being? I really want to see, I'm just looking at value. See how going, you know, pushing these shadows, I want a much more graphic feel to what I'm creating. Fabio on YouTube asks, hi Aaron, amazing composition. I would like to know which practice exercise do you think is important to improve drawing from imagination? Well, drawing from life is what's going to help you draw from imagination. The more you know reality, the more you can derive from reality and create something out of your head. So my, my drawing from imagination has really been helped by drawing from reality. So the more you do that, the better off you are. So this feels stronger now. Now my eye goes right to where I want the eye to go to, which is that, that head. And see, this is, this is another prime example of how, you know, you can use reference, but don't let it dictate to you what you should, how you should be doing your, your image. Let me show you what I mean real quick, because I want to, oops, I'm on the wrong layer. Uh, will you do a gouache painting course in the near future? Maybe yes. Maybe after the oil painting course? Yes, I will. So here I'm just getting a little bit of light on these areas here. So there's a little bit of that. <coughs> but if you look at the look at my original reference right here, right here. There's the original reference. You know, you always want to make your painting your own. There's the two of them together. Can you and blow you them can, up a little bigger? Oh yeah, sorry. So you can see the difference in how I've created them. Make this one a little bigger so you can see the difference. And I'm still working on getting grasses and, and the right uh, detail elements in this painting right. But this is, this is one of the reasons why working digitally to come up with a comp uh, is so nice because you're able to work things out and experiment in ways that you normally wouldn't if you're working traditionally. And so I can go into this and uh, play with it a lot and move things around uh, and it's a lot easier for me from a traditional standpoint or from a digital standpoint to be able to do that and, uh, and it's really cool. So anyway, that's... I'm going to continue to do, keep doing that and work it out before I start my painting on Monday. Hopefully I'll have it all worked out. And, uh, um, and we'll share it with you guys periodically along the way. But uh, anyway, I was really happy to share my experiences with you in Africa. And uh, we'll share a little bit more. And we'll be on the lookout for our Africa reference packs. We're going to be getting those out to you soon. Uh, those will be uh, really, really cool. It's going to be photographs from all the wild, different wildlife from several of my trips back, and uh, you'll be able to get that. Uh, we got another question. It says, I'm an animator who's been out of college for about five months now, and I still haven't found a job. My confidence in my skills is wavering, and I'm starting to give up. Do you have any advice? Yeah, don't give up. And, and, and you really just got to keep pounding the pavement. Um, draw as much as you can. Fill in that time. Animate when you can. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, just keep pounding the pavement. There's going to be somebody out there that needs your services. You know, it's a it's a pretty saturated market right now, and uh, it's tough. I know it's tough, uh, but you got to keep you got to stick to it, and you got to push through. So just do that. Uh, and I know it's easier said than done, but I've been there. I know I know what you're feeling, but you can do it. So uh, there's that. But anyway, I hope you guys had a great time. Um, Hopefully, once again, I'll show you this finished painting next week. And uh, remember, we're going to be going to one time a week starting in November. Uh, and that's going to be Fridays. Every Friday, we're going to be streaming uh, instead of the two times a week, Tuesday and Thursday. And that's going to be starting November, so November 1st. So uh, remember that. And also, really important, if you can pull up the thing. Sorry, I've got stuff on my lip. Uh, my live creature design, uh, believable creature design course uh, live is coming up December 7th so go over to creatureartteacher.com slash live and you can get a whole bunch of information on that that's going to be a six hour live class over the web 
uh, that you guys are going to be able to follow along with me on. And I'm going to go over anatomy. I'm going to talk about how you can reconstruct anatomy, the physiology of different uh, muscle groups, that sort of thing. And then we're going to create our own creature right there on the spot. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and then also, you know, for, don't forget, we've got our Patreon page, and we'd really love your support over there. That really helps us out. Uh, and you can, uh, at the two dollar or at the one dollar level, you can get images that you can download for screensavers. At the five dollar level, you can get Photoshop files that with all the layers in there. And then at the ten dollar level, you'll get uh, a live stream each month, along with access to uh, animation files and all kinds of fun stuff. So there's that. So anyway, uh, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with us this week. I'm really glad to be back. And uh, you'll be seeing more stuff from Africa coming out of us in the near future. That's going to be cool. Uh, but in the meantime, go out, put some beauty back in the world. Do something nice for somebody. Put your grocery cart away. And I'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Dustin? Awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. We're looking forward to you guys next time on Tuesday. And, yeah. uh, and until next time, as always, Cowboy Bebop. Later, guys. Nice. Happy <laughs> <laughs>